Colin Devenish here from transformationstm.com and rather than photograph it I just thought I would show this one to you in person before I discard you know get rid of the evidence um a couple of weeks well it, actually it was over a month ago now because this what we're talking about started to unfold on the 8th of December and if you're watching this in real time it's now the 10th of January um, I did some photographs of what I call blessed fruit and it was fruit that I was given while I was in a temple um, and the fruit had been prayed over and and blessed and there was just something delicious about it and one of the apples that was in the bag the best way I can describe it you know when you think about Walt Disney the way that Walt Disney used to draw his apples like if you think about Snow White and the Seven Jewels the apple was was massive and big and red and shiny and the apple in question had been left for about a week and a half just on my sideboard and uh, it still looked as fresh as the day that I was given it and it tasted absolutely delicious um, so and same with a I had an, an orange as well and I compared it to the oranges that I just had from the regular supermarket and they'd started to go a bit squishy and the orange from the temple was just in perfect condition and I was also given a banana in the pack and I decided and I completely forgot about the experiment till today because I was just talking to somebody in the membership group and we've got a thing that we're doing hashtag OSA um, if you're in the membership group you'll know what that is so I was chatting to somebody about it and she says look I'm not feeling well um, I've come home sick but I'm still going to do the OSA exercise because it's just designed to take two or three minutes you know five minutes if you want to you know put a bit of time into it you can do longer so I said to her, oh, well, my OSA task for today is the kitchen. I'm going to go and sort that out now. And what had been sitting in the kitchen was a box of mince pies. So they were kind of placed um, in front of a corner, if you like. So I'm doing the thing, sorting stuff out. And I moved the box of mince pies because I haven't opened them yet. They, they're good until I think the 24th of, of January. And then I saw the banana behind the box. And I was like, oh, my God. And for a minute, I'm like, oh, what am I going to be facing when I open that bag? Because it's been sat there for over a month. And if any of you have ever had bananas that you've left lying around, you will know they don't particularly travel very well. And I've been away over Christmas. I went to stay with a friend. And I looked in the bag and I was like, oh, my God, that is just bonkers. I always couldn't believe it. Now, it has now started to go off. But I want to show you what the banana basically looks like. This is what the banana looks like. It's a month old and it's got, you know, the tip of it now is just starting to go. But what I did at the time, because I realized that the fruit was looking pretty good. I also, and now I have to admit, they were stored differently. This banana was just left on the sideboard, just sitting in my kitchen. Banana that I bought at the same time was in my, you know, in the fridge. But you can see there's a massive difference between the two of those. And this one is really you know, quite squidgy and horrible. This one actually, if I was to cut the top off, it actually looks as though I could still eat it. But this was, you know, this was, I was given on the 8th of December and it's now the 10th of, of January. And, but the, the comparison between the two of them was like, oh my God, but I'd completely forgotten um, that I had had them there. And, you know, I, I'm, it's gonna be really interesting because um, the reason I was in the temple, it was, it was unfortunately, it was at a funeral that I was at. Um, really, really beautiful funeral. And one of the things, and those of you who were there, let me just see if I am, um, yeah, I do. So those of you who were there, you will recognize this particular picture and you can vouch for me being there. Um, but what was really amazing about the funeral is I went to the temple beforehand, which is where all of the fruit was stored. And they would, you know, the praying and the chanting was continuous and it lasted for, um, I would say a good hour. And that would have been going on well before we arrived as well. And, and then there was, you know, more prayers again and music when we got back and went back to the temple. Um, so that was pretty cool. And, and this is, I'm going to be interviewing someone in a couple of weeks time. Some of you might know Greg Braden, um, but Greg has spent a lot, a lot. Actually, here we go. So if you, ha if you don't know Greg Braden, this is this is what he looks like. But Greg is one of the most well-traveled people I have ever met. And uh, if it comes up in conversation, because we're going to be talking about his new book, which is called Human by Design. I have that there as well. So we're going to be essentially talking about his new book. So he's going to be talking about some of the discoveries with the changes in our in human DNA and um, what's going on with our chromosomes, um, answering some of life's 
big questions, you know, who are you, why are you here, all of that sort of good stuff. But because he has spent so much time um, traveling um, and being in the temples and, you know, being in there with the resonance of it, I might asking about it um, during that day, but I don't know what your belief system is. I know Oh, it was probably about 20 years ago when I was invited to a secret screening of something called um, uh, the, the second the sequel of the film was was down the rabbit hole. And it was the first time I'd ever kind of met Lynn McTaggart. And Lynn was talking about at that time, you know, the power, you know, talking about remote viewing, uh, power of healing. She's since gone on to write several books on that subject. And Lynn has done some really, really fascinating work about the power of prayer and where and she's done it scientifically as well so they would pray for particular people in hospital they would pray for particular areas in the united states and then they would do you know statistics on all of that data and so when i saw for those of you who are just coming on a bit later i'll show you the uh, month old banana um compared to the one of the same age that has was not prayed prayed over in the temple um and so Lynn has done some really fascinating and fantastic studies around this stuff. And I know Greg and, and Lynn are also very good friends. So when I do the interview with him in a couple of weeks time, we're going to be speaking for an hour. But I know already because Greg and I have worked together twice now. So there's an event that he flies over for each year, the TCCHE, the Conference for Consciousness and Human Evolution. That's where we first met. And I'm the host and MC for that event. And I know from that event, because we go out to dinner afterwards, and all that sort of stuff Greg and I can talk for England <laughs> and so um, I'm not quite sure which direction the conversation is going to take us once we've discussed the new book but if it does come up I will definitely definitely ask him about that um, because that's just kind of crazy and I if I had I remembered I probably wouldn't have um, left the experiment that long because I would have I would have seen the banana sort of start to go off and I either would have eaten it <laughs> or thrown it away so it's actually quite nice that it just completely went out of my head until I just moved the box of mince pies and there it was just you know neatly placed in the corner and, and you know fruit when it starts to go off as well uh, it's normally covered by fruit flies nothing because that, of course, would have alerted me to it as well, that there was something in the corner that was attracting my attention. But there's absolutely nothing. Um, and so I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm religious. I would say I'm more spiritual. So I really know from the work that I do about the power of energy, remote healing. I often do HUNA sessions with people as far afield as Australia, and I'm in the UK. And they will feel the energy, or even if they have no idea what I'm doing. I've had clients in the past send me an email, go, did you do HUNA today? And I go, Actually, yes, I did. Why are you asking? They go, I felt it. And that's just out of the blue, random. They have no idea what I'm doing. So I know about the power of energy. However, and I know also, because I'm a massive fan, actually, I've probably got, I can grab one here. Da, 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 da. I can grab several. So these are a couple of my books. You know, I'm a long time fan of, uh, of Emoto in his work. Uh, messages from water and the premise of that is that you bless the water and put energy oh, oh, oh this oh wow this one is he signed this one for me he's now passed away unfortunately but that's one that he signed for me when we met and we did a blessing at the river thames and so i've been a long time fan of masaro emoto and his work and you know with the energy work that i do and you guys will know, for instance, when we did, when I ran the Mind, Body, Spirit, Energy Fest workshop in December in terms of the live version, and we've got a video webinar version coming up at the end of this month. Um, but for those who booked for the speaker dinner, once everybody was there and had their food, we're in the middle of a massive restaurant and um, <laughs> didn't matter. And then we all sat down. We just sat for a moment. I did a blessing. Gina, the clairvoyant who run, kind of comes along and does sessions and runs sessions there with me as well. And we, we did a blessing for the food and put an intention into the food that we were about to ingest. And so I do all of that. However, this is a this is the first time where I've done an experiment um, having blessed food and then just left it to its own devices. And I've seen some really interesting videos on Facebook where they had, it was a particular school out in the United States because they wanted to show the effects of bullying. And so one of the one videos I saw, they had two plants which were identical. 
uh, across the way from each other. And every day the kids would either go to one of the plants, they would really, you know, say what they would say if they were bullying another child. And to the other plant, they would say wonderful affirmative things. And then they looked at what happened. They did the same experiment with rice. And the rice that was getting the abuse was basically just like fungus and black and clammy. And the rice that was getting the praise was wonderful. So I've seen those videos, but this is the first time um, an experiment has been conducted in that way. And as I said, I wasn't the instigator of it necessarily. For those of you who are coming on later, I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is the banana that I was given on the 8th of December um, after I had been to a temple and this had been blessed and people were chanting over it. And this is a banana that I had from the same time, which is just a regular banana from the supermarket. And um, I completely forgot about the experiment until I was moving some stuff in the kitchen, moving the box of mince pies. And the banana was very neatly placed behind it. And that's when I was like, oh my God. And I, I realized what the shape of it was. And I thought, I don't even want to open that. It's been sat on that sideboard because today, is the 10th of January and this was the 8th of December and then I opened the bag and I, and I opened it sort of in the middle first so that's the first thing I saw and it almost looked like the banana was still perfectly intact if it wasn't just for that end bit that was starting to go off so um, as I said I posted the picture of the blessed fruit several weeks ago because I was just impressed that it was good after a week so for it to be good after a month as I said, if I just cut the end off, I'm pretty sure that if I were to open that banana, it's probably still in very good nick. So what can I say? The power of prayer, the power of blessing um, is something I do anyway. And like, for example, this is a, a water bottle that I got for my 50th birthday. Thank you, Sheena. I love it. And so this and this go really well for me because whenever I fill this water bottle, I have the emoto intention that the energy of the crystals infuses into that. So this is my daily life and I'm always doing that with my food. And, you know, I do a bit of hula over the food, but this one brings it into, you know, glorious technicolor in terms of the power of this stuff and the power of our thoughts, the power of our energy, and in this case, the power of, of prayer. Because um, if any of you have ever been to an Indian funeral, you know, just the vibration of it, or just to hear, I can, you know, I've got goosebumps now, uh, just, you know, the way that the, the, the chanting, the, the vibration of it, and I had no idea what they were saying, um, in terms of I couldn't understand the language, but it wasn't about the language, it was about the energy and the vibration and the resonance of it. And I was, and I could actually, as I'm saying it, it's almost like anchoring because I can actually feel <laughs> the resonance now. I can feel, it's almost like you're, you're vibrating internally. And that's a feeling that I had when I was at the temple for the hour before we moved on to the church. Um, and it's, you know, I would say that the, the fruit has picked up on that as well. So it would have been interesting actually to keep the orange and to keep the apple as well, but they were, they look so delicious. I, I ate them. Um, but, um, but you know, hindsight is a wonderful thing, but then actually, and actually of all the things to keep, the banana is probably the most impressive because bananas go off so quickly and, and get very yucky when left to their own devices. So just thought I would share that one, you in, one with you in terms of the visuals of it, rather than just doing the, the photograph, because I thought the visuals might show it, you know, showing you in person might, might give you a better representation of it. So yes. And the final thing I want to say is this reminds me also, you know, I've got a couple of groups on Facebook and she, one of them is going to be, oh yeah, it's the anniversary next month. Actually, we started it in February, 2013. And one of the things that happened, I think it was probably about a week after she'd signed up and we were going to, we were going to be doing a series of live um, teleseminars as well as it was a 20, it is still, it still runs, it's a 28 day e-coaching program. So every day for 28 days, people would receive a magic and gratitude practice, which would help them bring more gratitude and appreciation and joy and balance and calm into their lives. We also had a private Facebook group and then we were having the teleseminar. So about a week into it, I got an email from her saying, I'm really sorry, um, been diagnosed with cancer. I don't think I'm gonna be able to take part in the teleseminars. Um, and I'm going to be offline for a bit, but could you ask the group to send me some healing? I was like, sure. Now to this day, we don't know what she looks like because she wasn't on social media. The only reason she joined Facebook, Facebook was to be in the Magic and Gratitude group. And so she'd never put an avatar picture up. So we don't know what she looks like. We all know is her name. 
So I go back to the group, I explain what's happened. And um, so we all collectively sent her some healing energy and sent her some good vibes. She then, about a week or so after you know, her treatment, she sent me an email. And she says, Marilyn, can you thank the group, please? She said, I'm sure that their collective healing energy helped me get through this and it has speeded up the healing process. She said the prognosis was pretty dire beforehand. She said the consultant was surprised at how quickly I was healing. And I was surprised, she was surprised, as in I, her, talking about herself. She says, and I was surprised at how good I felt afterwards because I, I really surprised and confounded everyone. And so I went back to the group and I thanked them. And I remember there was another lady who was uh, sick at home, off work, couldn't get out of bed. She says, Marilyn, there are, only, there are only three reasons I'm getting out of bed at the moment. One is to go to the toilet. One is to get a little bit of food because I can't really keep anything down. And one, the third reason is to go into the Magic and Gratitude group. And she sent us a wonderful message. I have got a copy of it somewhere just saying, I want to thank the group for their wonderful, amazing energy. This is the thing that has gotten me through this time. So I've long since also known about the power of the collective. And with the cancer, person who had cancer, the group didn't even know each other. We'd never spoken uh, we only knew each other by our tiny little pictures on Facebook and we didn't know her at all. Um, yet she felt the energy of that and she confounded everyone in terms of the speed and ease of her recovery. So um, when I see those posts on Facebook saying, can you send healing? Can you send energy to X, Y, Z? Um, it do, I do smile because I know that there is a power there. Um, or, and when it's when it's concentrated and when you've got people doing it at the same time as well or focusing on the same person, um, you know, anything is possible. So just wanted to share that one with you. I will send it also to the person who's um, the, 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 it was their relative. I was at their funeral. So I'll send it to them as well. They may be interested to kind of see the results of that because some really quite, you know, stuff that would take your breath away happened that day at the funeral which was just like at one a couple of points I was looking around and like did anybody else see that and actually I was standing next to a friend of mine and he drove me back to Watford that night and I'd mentioned it to him what I'd seen and what I felt and he said oh my god I felt it at the same time as you so it was not in my imagination <laughs> um, but I won't go into details about that that's a story for the, the person um, involved but there was some kind of miraculous stuff that happened um, that I observed. I, unfortunately, I, I mean, I didn't use my proper camera because I didn't think the funeral was the place to be doing it. Um, so I'll have to check and see. I haven't looked yet because, you know, Christmas came and everything rushed, but I think I captured some of it on kind of camera. But yeah, so there were a few things that happened at the funeral anyway that made me go, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, but yeah, but this, this was just like, oh, that's a bit, um, that's a bit crazy. That's a bit, that's a bit mad. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Um, I actually I'll probably delve into that banana tomorrow and just see how it looks. Uh, but yeah, interesting. Just thought I'd share. So have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are based in the world. And I will catch you later. Bye bye.